You do the intro. Well, you're so naturally good at it no, because you're you a DJ. Strip club DJ. Wow. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm, I'm Shelby. Do it again. I'm Shelby. I'm Garth. We're gonna just hang out in the studio today and make something fun. Um, this is gonna be kind of an iteration of our Hi. standard base <laughs> pattern. And instead of the green leather, we're gonna make it out of this kind of a sky blue Italian four four and a half ounce uh, pebbled crumb tan. Crumb tan. Let's go. We don't have to make these so wide though. How much did that other one cut off? Uh, it's just because the, the template that I have. Oh, and you it's, just use this? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, rock and roll. We're gonna cheat the Cricut system and why. All right, we got our pen, the knife blade, we got the long mat, and we're going to go. I'll make one more of those. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is cut the leather out for the base. And as you can see from our pattern here, that the stiffener is half inch margin on all the way around uh, for the leather, which will fold over onto the stiffener. And on this side, you can see we have a little, little shark bite here because a little error in manufacturing. So we just have to flip it over on that radius and Ideally, we would have uh, clicker dies for this, but we don't. So we cut them by hand in the cricket. Or circuit, or I don't know. How do you say that, shall we? The weights. <laughs> yeah. I need to charge this blade. Welcome part of the process. Can't be working with dull blades. The problem with the, these metal templates are awesome. The problem is as soon as you hit this once with on the blade, your blade's toast. This piece isn't that super critical, so if it's a little bit off, me, not that big of a deal. What is critical though is how smooth this is. This isn't 
That's why we cut it on that Cricut. On the clicker, it really turns out nice. But you try to cut this by hand, which we did for a long time. It Every little, you know, every little kind of blend in that radius or whatever is really amplified once you put it onto the leather. So the crate works good. All right, that piece is done. We're going to sky this guy, make some witness marks, and then we'll bond this together. And then we just need two pieces of this. This is this is a pretty universal pattern. We have several different designs that we use the same geometry for to make different stuff. You can see it's got a little tiny blem. Now this is grain corrected, but you can I see you, can see that. you can't see it on camera. Anyway, there's a little tiny blem there, and it's actually thinner throughout the hide, and that's probably a bug bite in the animal. I'll just cut right around it. So we need two of these, two of these dudes, and then we're gonna sky it, make some witness marks, and then we're going to start assembling it. We'll do this video in probably how many segments, shall we? Um, three, maybe three or four. Yeah, I think so. So this will be like a little maker series on this bag. We're gonna try to keep these videos to about. 20 minutes or less, and that way we can um, retain people's attention. I would watch this stuff for hours, you know how I am with YouTube. Yep. But hey, by the way, if you guys have, uh, if you find any value in our, in the videos that we make, uh, please hit the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up button. Maybe even drop a comment down below whether or not you like the way we do stuff or not. It helps out our channel and we really appreciate it. We're going to set up, make some noise. We're going to set up the skyver. We're going to sky this, put some witness marks on this, stitch this crap together, and bomb this up, and away we go. Sound groovy? That was a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. I am a lot. You know how that is. <laughs>
calipers? Oh yeah, here's some right here. These are calipers. Don't worry about that brand, that Mitotoyo brand. Don't pay attention to that. You don't need Mitotoyos, so don't buy those because they're crazy money. And these are basically, this is like an aerospace quality tool, you know. Don't need it. Ten bucks you can get these, something like this from Harbor Freight. You want to show them how it works real quick? Ten bucks. Just a quick... Yeah, so you Here, we'll grab our Wickening Craig. Cross me get a dollar. Oh, a dollar. Okay, let's do that. So you want to make sure that whatever calipers you have, you can change from inches to millimeters. So we'll put it in millimeters and we'll just zero the caliper out. And so this, this leather right here should fall in between, probably going to be like 1.8 millimeters, somewhere in that range, I would guess. Look at 1.77 millimeters. So we know that 1.77 millimeters is somewhere in between four and five ounces. So we'll just call it a four, uh, four and a half. So depending on who you are, you'd call this four and a half to five or four to four and a half. I call this four to four and a half. So that's all you would need. What about the skived piece? Where are we looking? On and ounce wise for that? Yeah, the one piece that you already skived. Okay, so now we're down to... millimeters. Now we're down to point, basically point 0.9 millimeters, which is slightly over um, two ounces. Rock and roll. Yeah. So there you go, an alternative. Yeah, so you can get this for free probably on Wicket and Craig's website, or you can definitely Google this chart. Just Google, um, I don't know, leather ounce chart. I don't know. Idea. Google something. But you can definitely find this. That's pretty handy though. It's nice yeah. and laminated. We got this from, the... from Wiccan, correct? Yeah. All right. Here we go. All right, the skivers, um, skivers all set up. We're going to skive all of these pieces and um, start putting it together. This is a handy tool too if you. If you have a skiving machine and you, you want to um, get one of these, these are really inexpensive. I think we got this from Joann's. It's a seam allowance guide. Really handy. We actually have them on all of our sewing machines too. But I put this on the 5 8 mark right here and just kind of eyeball this real quick from the from the uh, leading edge of that presser foot there to your, uh, your guide. I put that on right at 5 8 and just tighten that down. And that'll net us like a, a really half inch sky or it's perfect for for this kind of stuff so i use that little 5 8 guide there okay we're gonna make loud noises now
make sure you're storing your skyvers with this handle up and not in that down position. Make sure that handle's up. You just put any tension on this spring assembly all the time and you don't want to do that. Make sure it's nice and loose. Not cracked, bent, or broken. All right, so now I'm gonna make some marks on this leather so we know exactly where to put this stiffener. And then we're gonna bond that on and then we'll start stitching this thing together. Shelby, we need some more Sharpies. You probably wouldn't even need to do this, to be honest with you, but it makes it a lot easier. You don't need to worry about the radiuses and stuff. It's the stiffener's in. It has witness marks on it already. So that's how that's going to work. Just going to lay this on and bond this together, and then we're going to. Um, do all the uh, layover work here, and that'll be done. With the sacrificial glue up mat, so I get glue on the uh, on this mat. A lot of people ask us what kind of glue we use or what kind of glue this is. You just use contacts in it. You can get it at like any hardware store. Um, what do they call it? Weldwood? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, Weldwood is what we use for a couple years. That works great. Uh, if you don't like the smell of High solid, um, solid base glue. Yeah, solid base glue. Yeah, probably not going to be a good fit for you. But what we found is that if you pour a small quantity into a little jar, or container, or whatever, exhibit A, and let it air out, you leave the brush, you know, kind of leave it loose a little bit, and you let that glue air out. It does two things. It makes it so it's not so stinky. It kind of outgasses a little bit of the crazy solvent. And then it, and it also makes it stickier. It makes it thicker. This is a little too thick. Prime example. This stuff doesn't have a big long pot life. But it's this is still usable. We'll just add a little bit of new glue in here. But you can see the viscosity is quite different from that new stuff. Yeah, it looks like honey. Yep, that's what you want. And the reason why we use this glue is, number one, it works, and number two, we don't have to wait for it to dry or, or you know, get out hair dryers and all this kind of crazy stuff, as you would with um, like a water-based type glue. I don't even think Shelby really likes water-based glues. I don't mind this stuff. Hello. I think that's the. Uh -huh. There we go. I think that's the Rihanna. Rhenia. Aquium or a something. Aquilum? Aquium? Yeah. You can get that 15? stuff at. Um, um, Springfield Leather Company. They sell it. You can also get it at uh, District Leather. And you can also get it on Amazon. I'm pretty sure. Well, I don't mind it. However, I've only used it to attach wallet pockets yeah. like this. So all of these individual pockets are going to get stitched anyway. And it's a very small surface that gets stitched on. So Well, I think it sucks. So. In regard to bag making, I don't know if I really have an opinion. I have an opinion. It sucks. Well, <laughs> okay. That's why I use this stuff. And if this was water based and it didn't stink, yeah, I would, I would use that. But it, but it doesn't work in my opinion, so I use this stuff. 
but comment away for all of the people that want to say, hey, that stuff's going to eat your brain and it makes you systematically stupid and uh, it's bad for you and causes cancer. And We've accepted the risk. Yeah, pretty aware of what the risks are. And I'm good with that, so. But hey, we, we don't mind. Leave comments. Right, sassy pants. Yeah, and by the way, hit that subscribe button and the like button if you like our content. <laughs> Please. If you like the king of sass. Yeah, if you like the king of sass and you like our videos. Or you just like Garth and or me. Yeah, specifically if you like or, Shelby. This little nugget right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, bad dog. Not supposed oh, to be in the crafting goodness. room. Yeah. My sweet baby. Yeah, crazy gorilla. She is a crazy gorilla. Yeah, she is. Can I get a paw? Can I get a shake? How about the oh, other one? Oh, yeah, that's a nice girl. Get the other one. Can I get the. Oh, oh <laughs> no, there there, there's the there other one. <laughs> Bye, Duda. What you working with over there? Folding this over. And it, won't quite make it to the half inch mark. That's okay. Well, you did use a pretty large tip Sharpie, didn't you? It's just the fact of the matter is, is that, is that this distance is exactly a half inch. Oh, please. This distance from the line to the end of the Bontex is exactly a half inch. Mm -hmm. And the distance between the end, you know, there's a half inch delta between, you know, the, the circumference of this piece versus this piece is exactly one inch larger. However, you have to take into consideration you're coming around a corner, just like sheet metal is a bend allowance, right? So it's going to be shorter. Mm -hmm. So if you really want it to be fussy, you need to account for the bend allowance. And that's where patterning comes into play. A lot of times people get really confused on why this basic math doesn't work is because you need to account for um, that extra material right. that you need. Yeah, it's not just half inch plus half inch equals one inch. That's correct. There's another calculation that we're not going to go into uh, for bag making, but that's the reason why it doesn't sometimes fit. So here we're just stretching that leather around this radius. All we're doing is just kind of stretching it around here. Look at the little scallops. Those little and then when you're done, babies, you can just kind of massage this stuff into place and then we'll just roll it or hammer it flat so you can just stretch it out. And what does that do? What's that? This technique. How does that help you? Well, if we didn't do that, then you'd have this big bunched up kind of mess here and mm. you could never get it to lay flat. Yeah, see? That glue isn't killing all your brain cells. Uh, I got one or two left. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, now the cat's here. Don't call her because she'll start making even more noise. <laughs> <laughs> What is it with these animals? <laughs> Bird, get out of here. <laughs> okay, we're going to take this over here and hammer this flat. Good. Now, the last thing I'm going to do before I forget is I, have, I actually have this pattern stuck under here and we're going to pre-punch the holes for the feet. The feet. Oh. Looks great. Looks great. Hey guys, if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button. Click the little bell icon for future content. This is going to wrap up part one of probably our three or four video series. It could be more than that. We don't know. Yeah. Whatever. We're, we're trying to keep... do it. <laughs> yeah. We're just going to try to keep these as short as possible, but uh, a little on the fun side. So there we go. Part one. I don't know what you did that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll see you later.
Thanks for watching.